This is 180 milliseconds too late, the SSA Rocket League podcast. And I have with me faces you should be familiar with by now. Of course, is Ultrism in a very chilly Durban, I'm given to understand. And Mr. Bepic, who's not even on the same continent as us. So, gentlemen, how you how you all doing? Two thumbs up. Doing great, Greybeard. 18 degrees in Durban, 18 degrees Celsius, and apparently that's scarf and gloves with us for us. So uh, no, uh, chilly, no, no, but good. And I see you all to look like you're wearing a, a, a Canadian winter jacket there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still cold. Uh, Bro, I'm, not, I'm not cut out for this, but the fiery rocket league that we have this weekend, <laughs> it gives me something to look forward to, something to just coast out the, the dark days. Well, nice. Alt, that's, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing thing, you know, because we're about to look forward to and talk about the very last regional of the RLCS 21-2022 season. And it's kind of mind-blowing because it's the beginning of June. June last year, the scene was so dead. I mean, so how, how have you felt about just watching the progression of Rocket League in this region over the last nine months? Man, when we got our region announced, I still remember that sitting watching the live broadcast and going, what does this even mean? You know, I wouldn't have been able to picture what a year's time would have looked like from then. And I'm constantly, every single time we get one of these weekends, I'm blown away by how much more the scene has improved, how much more growth we've had. At the top levels, our guys are doing spectacular things. We've had such a growth. And like you say, it was dead. It was Orlando Pirates had win, won every other tournament and there wasn't really another notable team. You know, there were other good players in the scene. We saw that for a long time, but there was no other team that really looked to ever challenge them. No one was really getting involved with tournaments because there was no point. You know, Orlando Pirates was going to win and there was not the injection of money that we needed to justify second, third, fourth, fifth places for lands or something like that. So to see what the players have taken out of this and how they've grown and mm. how the scene as a whole has grown, the, the people joining all the discords, all the groups on, on Twitter, there's more interaction. I could not have pictured this and I could not be happier. And, and, and also a bit of, if we think about it, Snowy, Snowy was on the cusp of retiring. He was so bored with the scene because there was, uh, you know, there was really only one tournament that had any kind of money involved and, uh, you know, a lot of free stuff, low stuff. I mean, it's terrifying. Uh, Snowy would have been off playing pool somewhere or something ridiculous. <laughs> and now he's off to Dallas for Worlds. And, and then, okay, well, Mr. Bepic, as you know, so, so Ultrism's been suffering in the scene for many years, myself over the last three years um and and then I, i'm very keen to know from you <clears throat> i mean a year ago i'm not even sure you knew south africa existed as a country <laughs> and, and and now you're kind of intimately involved with our rocket league so how mm -hmm. did that all happen to you how did you become familiar how have you landed up being w with us today well i still remember my first experience with sub-saharan african R rlcs i was sitting in a sandwich shop and i get a message from one of my producer friends he's like hey what if i landed ssa rlcs and that was before fall regional one that was the, uh, the seasonal studios broadcast of it. and i was like man i would love to be on i would love to just get immersed in a brand new region because mm. i i had watched a little bit of uh, of pirates during the intel world open back in july when i had to play on the, that huge ping difference against all the, mm -hmm. the European teams, but I, I was blown away that there were other good teams in regions I hadn't heard of before, and so I was really eager to get involved, and I, I'm so glad I was brought back for winter because, I mean, we were, we we're talking about just before this, the storyline's always so much fun, and we always say that the hype is real in this region. Absolutely, and uh, okay, well, 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 so here we are. Um, one regional away from the end of our first season, our first involvement in RLCS. And it's been it's been quite something. In many respects, it's been the story of Orlando Pirates, but it's also now the story of Bravado. It's also the story of, of Apex, DNMK, ATK. There are great storylines, as you've just alluded to. So I thought we'd start, I, I mean, I guess, first of all, um, our... The uh, I was looking at the uh, at the Liquipedia page, and who are the brand new teams? Are they who are our debut teams? I don't think we have any brand brand new teams. They've all they've all flirted with with RLCs before. Wait, has Sun Moon Esports 
Last regional, the, the they, were, they were in yeah. regional two. Yeah, there we go. So that, that's that's kind of our, our most um, unknown team or, or inexperienced team. Millennial Times Gaming has got experienced players on it. So, you know, even though the team is new, there's, there's always there's like one or two teams that just pop up and mm -hmm. go, okay, yeah, sure. We've had Perry's agents joining us recently as well. And I go, okay. I like to see random other names, um, old players forming new organizations. It's good. And then we have Orion Aces, who've who've competed mm. in every regional. I, I bet, yeah, in every uh, every regional this split. Um, haven't done much yet, although they sort of were twelfth to mm. or ninth to twelfth, I think, in regional two. Finished stone last in regional one, so they've come a bit of a way. And uh, but they're, I, I guess. Uh, sort of nipping at the heels, getting their feet wet. Yeah, it's experience. I mean, they, they went to game five in an RLCS setting back, I think that was regional one against Unity, where that was, I mean, it's close. It's it's a clutch time that you have to play in and, and kind of get used to to advance further than just the, the stone last that they've been finishing in. So it, it's good to see teams like that. Okay. You know, the thing is, we've, we've got a definite, like, structure to the scene at mm. this stage. And that's that's what uh, Bepic was talking about when he said the storylines here is mm. that uh, since, like, the end of perhaps, what, spring, fall, fall sp split, I would say, we kind of already started to see what it would shape out. And now we've got the top two who are sitting there who are so nicely matched between Bravado and Pirates. The two people that we really wanted to send to the wild cards, such good ambassadors for the region as a whole. Um, and I mean, considering when we were looking at the beginnings of this, we were going, who's going to fight it out for second and be like the runner up that gets to go along with pirates. Now Bravado is actually taking them pretty consistently. Mm. Uh, so we've got two really strong competitors. Then there's been the, the middle ground, the, the guys trying to come up. And so you've mm. seen people nipping at that and we'll go into depth in that in a little bit, I'm sure. But People like Orion Aces and our new teams joining are, are kind of the, the next level after that. It's the guys yeah. where even if you just make it to main stage, like that's, that's fantastic. That's an accomplishment. We, I don't think we can ever take away from teams like that when there are hundreds of teams in the country starting to try and fight it out. You know, guys are coming through the close qualifiers consistently making their way onto the, the big day. And so it's the growth that's just the next level up. And so these guys really just need to take the exposure from this. And like Pepe says, the experience and mm. get better. It's, it, you've started your journey. You've come so far already. Okay. Well, I, I, a conversation I'd like to have toward the end is what is going to happen in the void of the four months between the end of the season and the start mm. of the next one, mm. which I think is going to be interesting. But um, in my mind, Bepic, there are – there's a clear distinction between the top eight and the bottom eight if we look at this regional coming up. And I don't know, what are your thoughts? Let's start from the bottom. For you, who are, who are the bottom eight teams? Bottom eight, okay. So the bottom six, I, I think, is definitely easy to come up with. Perry's Agents, the Mooney Sport, Kitsune, uh, MTG, Unity, Orion Aces. I'll throw Evolved Gaming in there. But Nibble Esports, the team that stands out to me, like that came from the closed qualifier because that's a team that has the potential to upset a, a top eight team and, and squeeze their way in there. Even a top six team they, they could take down, and they have before in ATK. But I, I don't know if... I can, in my right mind, pick out a top eight team right now and replace them with Nivel. It's it's difficult, which is good. I like that, that difficulty of uh, not having the, the concreteness of a top eight. But I, I guess them and Espionage kind of go at it a, a little bit, though. Espionage, I think, 2-0 against Nivel in the last two regionals. So I, I'll give you my top nine, Gravy. I'll, I'll take a cop out on, on that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. He's, he's got a point, though. Like... As it stands, it's not like the top eight are all pretty similar level and the bottom eight are a different mm. level kind of thing. It blurs very significantly in the middle there. So you got the top two, and then you got like the next five, and then you got the mm. next four or five, and then you've got like the guys at the bottom kind of thing. So, okay, well, uh, yeah, I would say splitting at half at eight eight is difficult, man. 
Okay, well, I'll tell you what, because in, in my mind, it's fairly clear. Now, so I'll give you my bottom eight, okay. and, then, and, then you can, and then you guys can fight me for it and, and or not. Um, but important <laughs> right. to say, because there is a little bit of a cop-out on my part, is the bottom eight, <laughs> I, I'm not going to name, it's not in any order. So it's not uh, places eight mm-hmm. to 16. It's just mm-hmm. these, these are in the, in, in the bottom of the field from my, from my point of view, based on either the fact that they don't have much of a record, like Orion Aces, we don't have much to go on with them. This is their, their the first split they've been in, and uh, and they haven't had great results. So that's so kind of based on that. So my bottom eight are, in no particular order, I emphasize, are Perry's Agents, Sun Moon Esport, Kitsune, Millennial Times Gaming, Unity, Orion Aces. Oh, now now I've got You're a missing yeah, two. I, 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 You're missing I two. Know, I there's it was there's so your clear. split. <laughs> it was so clear in my mind, and now I'm now I'm like, oh oh okay. Well, then, okay, if, okay. So go ahead. That, that's the obvious break, right? That's yes. the obvious break. Is where mm-hmm. it becomes blatantly obvious. Like that's where your your bottom what's that six teams are there. Then you've got stuff like Espionage and uh, Evolved Gaming who are trying to bring up now the, the next couple of them. Mm-hmm. And then just ahead of them, you got the teams like Ice Esports, Digital Devils are starting to fight out. Nibble goes in there as well, I think. And then above that, you're starting to get to the guys who are doing consistently well every single regional, up and down, you know, fluctuating in their performance. But DNMK, and again, this one's no particular order now, D- DNMK, um, Apex, and ATK are now also like fighting for that top three position. So like those, those are the clear lines to me. No, and I, th- I, I, I think you're right that it's, it's almost like maybe there's a, a top six-ish, a bottom six-ish, and then a very messy mm-hmm. middle. Um, mm. Yeah, so, but you know what? Before, in preparing for this, I had a very clear, I was like, okay, very clear bottom eight, top eight, but that middle, you're quite right, is, is quite messy. So for me, in the messy middle, and Bepic, I don't know what your thoughts are on this. So in the messy middle are... Uh, Ice Ice Esports, Team Espionage, mm-hmm. Evolved Gaming, Nibble Esports. Mm. I think yeah, I, I think everyone really above agree. and below that is kind of clear, or a lot more clear. Yeah, because those are the guys that could beat your ATK, Apex, DNMK, but could also lose to your Unity or MTG or Sun Moon Esports, like that kind of thing. There's no, there's, there's all, so much fluctuation. I completely agree with you there. They, they they can step up to the plate, but they could also have an off series and get knocked out. Okay, well now, if you well, just, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll... just like, like to, to sum that up, if you look at just like the stats of the previous split, the first round of that upper round one is always like basically three O's across the board, right? There might be a three one in there for flavor kind of thing. Then you get to the upper quarterfinals and like half of those are either a sweep where it's two mismatched teams or a three two where you've got someone like ATK and DNMK coming up against each other at that stage. Then you go to the lower bracket and like that's South African or Sub-Saharan African Rocket League is it's either like a blatant mm. sweep and a hammering or a ridiculously close contest that no one no one expected or like expected it to go close but ridiculous amounts of drama mm. in every one of those series epic mm-hmm. uh, i he, he's right that i i so enjoy the uh the day one cat streams like i i love day two and day three as well because that's when we get the top six mm. going at it but i thoroughly enjoy just being in the muck at the, the, the lower round one and two just figuring out if we are going to have another team move into that mm. gray area of a middle zone that we've got in this region or if they're gonna stay stuck in that uh that round one exit but it, it's it's a lot of fun because that those teams also don't get a ton of experience Exposure and that day one mm. is their time to shine on stream. That's why I love getting to cast them because they are they're they're kind of the new bloods that uh, that are trying to prove themselves. Well, I guess it's uh, it's a little bit of chaos. Uh, well, the the potential for mm. chaos is there. You know, if you're pirates bravado that sort of thing. You're you know you're going to cruise through your two games that you need. Move on to day two. Whereas mm-hmm. those messy middle teams have to rely. You know, depending on seeding, they're going to draw. You know, Orlando or bravado. You know, a big team, and they're going to get clapped that first game. And then they just hope that it goes in such a way that they get a team they can beat in the next round. Mm-hmm. You know, that you're going to pick up a. a, a 
you know, a team that's closer to you. And I guess that's the difference. That's what starts to separate the top from the bottom is is Pirates is scared of nothing here. You know, they're not going to meet Bravado um, on day one, whereas, <laughs> you know, the other teams quite likely mm-hmm. are. Um, so, but if you're in that middle, you kind of have to uh, – it's 50-50 on whether you're going to get a, a favorable draw in, in terms of results and yeah. so on. So, and, and, and you want to get above that where you're not hoping to get a, uh, an average team that you can beat and sort of limp your way into day two. All right, well, now let's, now let's go to the top. So our, in my mind, after, after Regional 1, it was, very, it was a, quite unclear for me after the top two places. Uh, mm-hmm. Orlando Pirates, Bravado Gaming, and then it was, ooh, DNMK, Apex, uh, Nibble, ATK, uh, not, not, yeah, maybe, maybe Ice, maybe Espionage, that, oh, and then Digital Devils. I mean, geez, uh, they were a, clearly third yeah. up until the start of this regional. Now it's uncertain. But after regional two, I feel that Apex and uh, DNMK laid a, a serious claim for places three and four. Yep. I, they have, I mean, the last two regionals, them both going at it in the lower semis, and then DNMK got the, the first one. No, Apex got the first one, and then DNMK responded last regional. And honestly, the way they're playing right now, Greybeard, I, I think they're going to be playing in that same lower semis spot next regional just to see who gets that final say at third. So, Alt, if... if, yeah. if uh, so, so my, my my question to you: So, if we agree that that's kind of now our three and four, mm. who's five and six? Where, where does everybody else start to shake out? You know, it used to be a a top three fight, even mm. since the first game of the first RLCS split here in Sub Saharan Africa. A- ATK used to be up there fighting against the top teams, and I just. It seems like every event, they're taking like half a step back, half a step back, half a step. Because they, I would have said that they would have been, you know, in consideration for those top three or top four teams at least kind of Mm. thing. Um, And yet you look at regional event one, the splits, and they got knocked out in lower round two to Nibble Esports. And I go, that is is actually like a tough, where where we're going, Nibble's trying to prove themselves. What better way to do it than take out ATK like that early into the competition? And then, you know, since then, ATK again coming back, trying to fight, go to the lower quarterfinals. I mean, they even got to the upper semifinals. They lost it out over DNMK there. That was an incredibly tight contest. But then dropped to Apex again in the lower quarterfinals, 4 2 kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty convincing win. So, they're, they're just not in with that top four at this stage. They're not fighting. I don't think that ATK is up at the mm. level of DNMK and Apex right now. Just I think that DNMK and Apex have kind of grown past ATK more than ATK is slipping downwards. And now it's a case of are there other teams going to take out ATK from the fifth slot? So I'm putting ATK in the fifth slot right now. And then Ooh. it's Digital Devils, Ice Nibble as your kind of those those ones are are less clear to me and i think that's where it's going to get fun this regional digital devils behind atk mm. yeah sure okay. I, I think atk <laughs> still got a lot in the tank but mm. um like digital devils again they they're not putting up the big contest um when it comes to the big teams right is when digital devils meets apex gaming they go down 4-0 when obviously when they go against something like bravado then that's that's great but I haven't seen too much of Digital Devils taking out teams like on their level pretty convincingly. Mm. Um, yeah, going down to uh, DNMK uh, well, 4-1. Well, they've it's been, been a while, yeah. Now, they've been an interesting team because they, they blasted into the second split, the, uh, the spring split, like they were... No, this is the spring split. So I get so confused because it's the wrong it's the wrong yeah, season for sense. us. So what it was for winter split, winter split. Um I mean they came out of nowhere. I mean Alt, you and I cast that game, mm. that 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 ridiculous reverse sweep. Um after after a very it was a great day, but it all went to type. It was kind of everybody who mm. was supposed to win won and they won fairly convincingly. It was the last series of the day. And, uh, you know, in my mind, you know, everyone's kind of packing up and getting ready to leave. Yeah. And then this this royalty team come and uh, I think to this day remains one of the most epic series I've cast. Just, I mean, a, a best of seven reverse sweep. And they, in many 
in many ways stole the show in that that entire mm. split because they seemed to come from nowhere and made such an emphatic statement. But Mr. Bepic, a little a little off the boil in the split so far. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was them taking a step back or teams that made roster changes taking a step forward because mm. the teams we're talking about penetrating that top four now in Apex and DNMK, they both made roster changes whether you know mm. they wanted to or not, but it's worked out. I mean, the addition of Panda over at Apex, I, I think, has elevated their gameplay and DNMK... You know, losing Echo, not a great thing, but it, it's worked out for them. Mm. Their their new roster is looking very good. They contested a Bravado Gaming that won the whole regional. And so I guess that begs the question of, are roster changes just that effective, mm. or is it like a honeymoon period for those first two regionals? And is Regional 3 really where we're going to see those teams start to struggle a little bit or other teams catch up? I, I don't know. It's an interesting concept, roster changes. So I... I don't know, Greybeard. I don't know. Okay, so I think that's uh, one of the reasons why ATK dropped, though, is like it's mm. why ATK has been dropping down the roster or the the rankings is simply because, gotcha. like you say, the roster changes is taking the really distilled essence of a couple of good teams and putting them together, and it's doing fantastic things. Whereas ATK has been pretty static for a while now. Yeah, and maybe that's a case of not necessarily ATK falling away so much, or or Digital Devils falling away as it is. Mm improvement mm. from uh, uh, the level rising in yeah. other standards and they've kind of stayed still for too long. All right, well, um, let's do this now. So, so okay, so the takeaway from this part of the conversation has been a fairly solid top four, um, a fairly mm. obvious bottom six. As for the rest, a little crowded and cluttered, 80K probably at five, Digital Devils, and then it does get messy for the rest. But that mm. middle that middle section, yeah. certainly a messy one. So let's, let's go forward to Friday. We have our first round matchups. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to run through this quickly like a, 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 a prediction for each one as we go. So up mm. around one. First match there is Orlando Pirates, Orlando. Perry's. Pe okay, fine. Bepe? <laughs> Orlando. Uh, yeah, oh, there's no way oh, Come on, on guys. Match. Where's, where's your on. faith? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I have I'm, a lot of faith in uh, Pirates. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think we're in accord. I think we're in accord. Orlando Pirates. Ice yeah. Esports, Espionage. That, not so clear yes. in my mind. Mm. Yeah, close, close game. I still think us takes it, but it's it's much closer. I think it's one of our top two closest games yep. for the day. I'm gonna go espionage. I think they've been trending upward, and mm. I think ice a little bit backwards. So I'm gonna go espionage. Okay. All right. Uh, to me, it's gonna come down to I don't know what the coaching situation is, and 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 who's mm. how much work is being put in from a coaching point of view for each of those teams, kind of between the regionals. But you are very tight, and oh man, it's a tough call. But I, I under duress, I'm gonna take espionage for that one. But uh, not 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 in any convincing way. It's almost a coin toss that one for me. All right, DNMK Sun Moon Esport. DNMK. Yeah, DNMK. Yeah. I, I think we agree there. Digital Devils Millennium Millennium Times Gaming. Digital Devils. I want Digital Devils to come out strong in this one. Mm -hmm. Like I think if they take this, but it's like a what three two or something i don't think that they're going mm. to look good for like i'm not gonna have a lot of confidence for the rest of the weekend but i think they'll take it they just really need to take it well are you happy with digital yep. devils bepic i am i mtg is a good team but digital devils really have something to prove for this uh, this regional so here's my thought on that is uh, again i do agree with you but for me this is a matchup with the potential for an upset um mm. for uh you know, for MTG to have a a blinder of a Friday night and 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 just come out the gates firing. And so for me, there's potential for an upset, but I do think Digital Devils will take it as we stand now. Next up is Bravado hey, Gaming. Wait, wait, no, sorry, so go ahead. Wait, just, hang on. Like, so are you just saying that like if if it comes down to like a three two Devils win, it could just be that Millennial is playing their mm. socks off kind of thing, and it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a bad showing on Digital Devils. Um, and then Millennial might just carry on, like you say, for the rest of the night. That could yes, be fun. It, 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 it could be, but I'm inclined to agree with your first sentiment that uh, mm. 
you know, a 3-2 is not good for Doodle Devils. I, I, I do mm. think from a confidence point of view, if they win this, they want to come out and stonk. 3-1 uh, mm. at, the, at the worst, um, but, yeah. but mm. good, solid games to set them up for the weekend because I do think they might be having a little, a little bit of a uh, crisis of confidence. Um, maybe that's overly dramatic. They are the only team, by the way, um, and, and it's worth mentioning here. There's four of them on the team, and they like to rotate over the regionals. Um, you know, where originals sit out or and, and a Eugen, mm. or, or Eugen might sit out and original comes in or zero out. The, the consistent one, of course, is, is, is Eli Kim. But uh, uh, it's an interesting strategy that, and I don't, I, I don't know if it's good or bad. I think it depends on the team, honestly, because yeah. we saw Digital yeah. Devils with original having success in the last regional, and mm. maybe it's a just on the day kind of thing. Like if this player is mm. playing well on the day, keep them in and figure the rest out on the fly. It's a it's an interesting strategy for sure. All yeah. right, fine, but we'll it, mark it, it. It's not common, but it's good. <laughs> not common, but it's and maybe the fact that it isn't common. You know, I I, I think yeah. we've I think we mm. can be very quick to. Um, to say it's a bad thing, um, but uh, I don't think as a blanket thing it's fair to do that. Mm. No, Depends like team. If, if you, I would rather have four great players who I mm. can call on at any stage mm -hmm. and not have one designated strategy rather than a team with like two really, really solid players and one guy that might just be temperamental and, and not necessarily have the best day. And then you go, okay, we got to make this work, guys. You know, mm. just when it's, it, gives less pressure to the players. If someone is fe genuinely feeling like they are just not hitting the ball nicely the day, maybe they've got some personal things going on. Someone's got load shedding or something like that. <laughs> they go, we have not lost anything by going, right, our, ne our next player is going to come in. Original, incredibly solid player. The fact that he's not up in there, like starting three sometimes, or like, according to uh, Liquipedia, he's not. Mm. Like, like that's, that's a travesty. The guy's, the guy's a solid part of that team. Mm. Okay, fine. So uh, questions around their digital devil should take it, uh, but I think mm. uh, I think we agree that the result there is going to influence how digital devils do for the rest of the weekend. But uh, yep. uh, another interesting one, similar to ICE and Team Espionage, there's there's potential and possibilities there. Next up is Bravado Gaming and Katsune. Bravado. Kits yeah, bravado, Bepic. Bravado, <laughs> yeah. Indeed. And, and that's a tough one. And that's one of those ones when you're in the bottom eight, you know you're going to get pirates yeah. or, or bravado, and you're like, oh, well, yeah. uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully we win in the lower bracket. <laughs> All right, next You've got to play until you reach a, go a, a person that you can't beat or like yes. it's going to be a really tough game. You've got, you got to play the easy games that you can until you get a tough game that you really want to fight and come out the victor and feel good about yourself, and then you get stamped. Like, you know, that's, that's unfortunate the way it is. And you just try and delay that. When do we meet up against the pirates or the bravado kind mm. of thing? Is it going to be day one? Well, sucks to be bottom mates, I guess. Like, it's just, there's <laughs> nothing you can do about that. And it kind of reminds me when I'm having a bad run in ranked. Um, my, the thing that keeps me going is, you know what? Eventually, I'm going to hit my level. You know, you'll go down enough where you finally mm. find the people you can beat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. there, yep. two is there somewhere guys <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> all right and then and then the next one's a tough one for me nibble esports evolved gaming mm. I, I like mm. both of these teams so much and i so badly want them to do well particularly evolved i think you know they just haven't quite done much I, uh, nibble have actually done quite well they've made top eight uh, yeah. both regionals so and and i know at the start of the of the of the split uh, mr low was looking as a minimum top eight and then we we go up from there uh but uh anyway your your thoughts uh alt who takes that one i feel like nibble's got a pretty decent run of form right now um, they're looking good. They're consistently getting through at least the bottom uh, or the beginning stages of that lower bracket when they eventually get knocked down. Mm. They tend to get knocked down pretty quickly, but uh, once they get down there, they're doing their 3-0 plays. They're taking mm. on teams like ATK. So, you know, they're still... Nibble is definitely vying for that middle ground. They're not vying for the bottom ground, which is yes. where I feel like the the, the new roster that is um, unfortunately the the evolved gaming side mm. is they're all like experienced players and stuff, but mm. they're still new together, and so mm. they haven't got the cohesion yet. They haven't just felt it out yet. They are going to. I think they will be very happy the more games they can take, even if they don't take out Nibble. I think if they can take a two three mm. against Nibble, they would be pretty happy with that, just to solidify themselves. I think so. And 
Evolve has gone out in round one, or not round one, but they, they've gone to game five in round one of both regionals. And that is difficult because those are the teams you need to be beating mm. if you're going to be in that center area, like just mm. near the top eight, but also like above the, the bottom six. You got to be beating those teams kind of convincingly, and they haven't done that. So I, I'd be remiss if I didn't pick Nibble in this one. Mm. But Evolve Gaming, like you guys said, they've got the experience. They, they've got the potential to beat Nibble. I just think Nibble Nibble prevails and in, in round one that's right. why i said like you, you asked what uh, i said earlier that <clears throat> the first game was going to be my, my closest of the day kind of thing yep. that it was the one that I, I thought would maybe be a, a very close contest i think this is the second one you know mm. a, a, apex um mm. orion uh, we'll see we'll talk about that but mm. you know that's ice team espionage and then nibble versus evolved are probably my two closest matches of the day all right, fine. So I think we're in accord there. Nibbly sports for that one. And then Apex, Orion Aces, uh, Alt. Apex. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay, good. I mean, it would be a massive upset if Orion Aces take it. Yeah. And honestly, mm -hmm. I'd love to see yeah. it. But I think we, we, we try and live in the world of reality where we have to. <laughs> yeah. Apex Gaming take that one. And then last, ATK Unity. ATK. Alt. Okay. ATK, Bepic. Yeah. ATK, I want that Apex versus ATK matchup in the upper corner. Yeah. So no upsets here, I hope. No, that is going to, you know, and Unity is another yeah. team I like so much. And I really want them. Mm. I mean, Alt, we cast them mm. in the final of the VS Gaming High School Championships last year. Yeah. And, and, I, I, I had so much hope and hope for them in, in, in RLCS, but they, but they've struggled. They've not really, gone much further than a round one they have consistently made made it into the main event so they got that going mm. for them but once they're in a massive struggle and then last last regional what a disaster they had to forfeit because of oh, exams yeah. and you know what that may well be a factor where, you know you're in university you've got you know they've they've got real life pressures and 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 so mm. i can accept that that's getting in the way of it but they're a team i'd love to see doing very, very well going forward in the future. But I think we agree ATK take it. So that's the first round. We're not going to bleed our way through the entire bracket, but let's move to the end. And and, and Mr. Bepic, I'll start with you this time. Mm. How do you see, um, uh, let's say, uh, the, the last, the top four? The top four comes uh, Sunday. Or... How does it finish? Does it does it finish the way we've already agreed on who the top four are, or do you see the potential for some kind of shakeup? What are your thoughts there? The potential is there. Obviously, Pirates and Bravado are going to be in that upper bracket final come Sunday. I think that's that's the most likely outcome when we're thinking about potential outcomes here. DNMK and Apex would be the easy answers for me to say. I'm getting their third rematch in the lower semis, um, but. I, I want I want an upset. I want something to change just a little bit. Not not enough yes. to, to create complete chaos. But I think Digital Devils, they, they bounce back this regional. They've still got that potential. They've had mm. the time to adjust to the roster changes. And I'm not going to worm my way through the bracket to figure out who they would be beating. Yeah. But I think they take the place of either Apex or DNMK. All right, Alt, your top, okay. who, who finishes top four? I, I like I like Bipic and his optimizing. I, I like your idea, my friend, of going, if there's an upset, where does it come in? Because, mm -hmm. again, we've talked about our top four. Obviously, Bravado and Orlando Pirates being your top two. Um, ATK, I want to see them research. Mm -hmm. I think they've got a backing of a decent organization. I think they really made a good name for themselves at the beginning of the splits. Um, and so I want to see them finish strong. Just so that we've got another big team up there that they can mm, all yes. scrim against and stuff like that. Either that or, you know, yeah, DNMK has been good. So I would put DNMK and Apex as my, my three and four. Apex potentially slightly ahead there. Very slightly. I wouldn't put money on it, but, you know, a little bit ahead. But Nibble or ATK? I want to see one of them Ooh. do well. Okay. Uh, well, I like listen, I, 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 I'd, I'd back Nibble to make it into top six. I Fair. don't. I don't yep. know if I, I don't know if they can go further than that with uh, Digital Devils, DNMK, Apex, all of those teams kind of in the way. But you know mm. what? Here is a factor for me, and I don't know if this plays any part. And I know if you speak to all the players, they will absolutely deny it. 
But effectively, the places are settled. There's no real big picture competitions left. The world spots are secured um, pretty much, you know, from a point it's all settled. I mean, the only thing really is is kind of pride and some cash. But I don't know for like mm-hmm. Bravado and Orlando Pirates, are they – are they in cruise mode? They, you know, they don't have to. They don't have to come out here and and be top of the pile. Is that something that can upset the apple cart, or am I pipe dreaming? No, I think you're <laughs> dreaming, Greybeard. I mean, these guys are competitors. Like they are going to worlds. They know that they've got more eyes on them than ever right now. Yeah. And if they're going to worlds having bombed out of the last regional of the season then other teams across the planet are going to see that and think they're even weaker than they might have already mm. perceived and that's I, I don't think that's where bravado and pirates want to have their perceptions landing i think i that's mean a- let, let's put it this way yeah, yeah. Let, let's put it this way. The, the casters, we don't know who the casters are for wildcard yet. And the first thing that they would say about a team that just like bombs out of like that, this is the team that got six of the um, <laughs> regional titles and then lost and came like knocked out first day. <laughs> Bro, like that doesn't that doesn't die easily. So we're, yeah. we're definitely not expecting that. And the other thing is, you got to remember, even, even just like for a single regional like this, the prize money compared to the other... So, sub-Saharan African tournaments. Yes. This is like a year-long league for mm. a, a single weekend. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's no way these guys are giving up that opportunity to actually get what they can. I mean, these guys are trying to get to Dallas. These guys want the money. <laughs> like, they need the money to get to Dallas kind of thing. Yeah, and once they're there, hells yeah. So they're playing. They're playing. And I think Pirates is actually playing harder because they mm. lost against Bravado. Mm. And so they want to end on that big note. I think they're coming into this fighting. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree with you, but uh, you know, there's uh, we 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 will see how we panned out at the end. But as we come <laughs> to the close here, I think it's worth just mention. I mean, we've spoken about it on on uh, during the broadcast, but now as well, we should mention how epic that we have two teams, Bravado Orlando Pirates, going to Dallas to compete at a LAN mm. and and whatever we think may happen and 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 the pessimist and you know there's there is pessimism that we're going to get clapped and out there's also some sort of crazy optimism that wow can you imagine we make you know the main event um but how epic i mean we what an experience for these guys they're going to the rocket league world championships and again let's think a year ago if you told snowy darth skill steel uh happy meal to die for daisy that next year guys you're going to be going to rocket league world championships they would be like I, there's just no way how epic Pepe, take us first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. Like, I am going to be driving to Dallas from where I'm at right now, it, it, just <sighs> envisioning seeing the SSA guys on the stage. And I and I don't want to say it's a sure thing. I'm still waiting on tickets on Friday. But mm. I absolutely cannot wait to watch these guys in person. Like, and watching them, I got to talk to Happy Meal last regional after they won. They're great guys. And mm. I, I want to meet them in person. I want to I want to see them succeed. And Success may be taking a couple games off of big teams, but that's still experience. We talked about it earlier with the um with with the bottom six, just getting games and clutch scenarios in RLCS. This is that, but on a on a greater scale for Pirates and Bravado, because they will have that land experience against the, the top dogs of the world. And that that's just huge for a region. Mm. Yeah. I'll- I, I think it's really big that both of the teams going through have such a strong showing. Mm -hmm, The fact that we're not, like when we looked at the beginning, we chatted about this, was that it was Orlando Pirates all the way. Like they they Mm. were really strong from the get-go. But the next team was always kind of a toss-up. We already originally had that, um, they were called Water at that time versus Mm. ATK, which one would come (laughs) through. I can't can't believe they've been picked up by organizations like this, like midway through the season. But we kind of had a, a, a consolation second prize and that's that's really rude to say but it, it really felt like that with the big yes. chasm between the teams now bravado is going through on an equal footing with orlando pirates we have two amazing ambassadors and i think that the scene um i really hope that the scene as, as a whole and if you guys are watching this guys rally behind both of these mm-hmm. teams don't pick one of them over the other one don't go oh you know d- does um bravado really deserve to be there maybe it should have been someone else no these guys have proven themselves time and time again to be really really good they're our best shot and no matter how well they do there 
it's the they're raising the ceiling of all of South African Rocket League to the point where they will bring back that experience. Teams playing against them will gain that experience, will just gain notoriety on a national stage. Like we'll get potentially like this. There's, there's so mm -hmm. much potential for what happens if we do well. But mm -hmm. even if we flunk out and we learn just a little bit, just the experience, you've got to die for who's sitting. I think he's just turned 17 now. Mm -hmm. Daisy's sitting at roughly 18. These guys are still in school. And now those are the guys who mm -hmm. for the next 10 years are going to create what Sub-Saharan African Rocket League is going to be. Give That's them your full support. Uh, great, great words, and 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 very important. We got to rally behind them, and uh, you know, I had a conversation with Darth's dad, and I, I I love how he's you know he's about to turn sixty, and he's so supportive of what Darth is doing in the team, and he loves Rocket League. And I asked him, I said, "So are you going to go to Dallas?" And he says, "You know, me and me and the mom would love to go, but it is now time for Darth." to go on his own into the world with his mates and just have a great time. I, t I, 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 I got quite emotional about it. It was just, it's so fantastic. I mean, Darth hasn't left the country. He's going to Dallas for a world championship. I mean, it's, it's mind blowing what's going on here. And so, yeah, the best of luck to, to both of them. And it's whatever happens, it's going to be a joy. We are being represented. We're out in the world and it'll only get better from here. So, Big, massive props to them. And then last question to you both. Um, what is your hope for, I mean, there's going to be format changes next year. There's all, there are always mm. are format changes in a new season of RLCS. Um, uh, <clears throat> I do feel like SSA was an experimental region. We were almost there, not quite, but you know, we don't have spots at the majors, whatever. Alt, what would you hope to see for SSA's inclusion next season we got to get to majors that's the big yep. thing is you know just at least have one slot at the majors where we can send our best representative to a land and go go play against the best earn us reputation get some experience get against these big teams because as long as we're kept out of the majors we're not growing to our full potential mm -hmm. we're not getting the experience against the best teams in the world and no matter if you get clapped 13 nil Mm. You're still learning something because getting to play at that higher pace, getting to play against the mechanics you have literally never seen before on our limited service is huge. And so mm. if we can get to the majors in any capacity, I, I don't even mind if for the, the grand finals or anything, we still have to go through a wild card play or something like that. Mm. But regular tournaments on a major stage. Mm. All right, good. Mr. Bepic. Oh, I gotta agree with all. I mean, mm. you gotta get that experience on the world stage. I also want to see more good-sized orgs coming into this scene and picking up teams, yeah. helping them develop. Because this is a region that has you were talking about it the the youngsters that can carry it forward for mm. years to come. And if orgs come in early on, they can help those teams develop a bit faster. Just get them the resources that they need to help the region grow, and then. Who knows what this region's like in five years? You may see your team that you picked up at this stage when they were smaller going to worlds and beating even larger orgs. It's mm. it's so important to have the support of um, organizations that have funding behind them to to help a region develop. And I, I hope that's the case. And it starts with getting more major spots because that's what orgs want to see. All right. Well, I, I, I agree with that. Absolutely. Major spots. And along with that, which I think would encourage orgs to get involved, is our prize pool needs to match at least APAC. Um, mm. So to be at around $30,000 per regional, that starts to be the kind of money that also is, is something of an, of an incentive for orgs to be involved and start to look at crazy things like boot camping and, and sort of more long-term plans. All right. Well, we have waffled Just on probably long enough. But that's our that's our brief look forward to the final read final regional of the RLCS season for 2021-22 in SSA. And uh, yeah, Ultras are Mr. Bepic. Thanks for coming to hang talk about it. We will of course convene over the weekend and talk some more. Cannot wait. Last <laughs> of the best, last of the first season. It's been such a wild ride up till now. It's gone too fast. Let's let's finish this strong. Uh, I can't wait, Greybeard. Thanks for having me on. I, I thoroughly enjoyed yeah. this, and I 
this weekend, it's going to be a banger. I'm, I'm promising that. It's going to be huge. All of you, be there and be nowhere else. But for now, peace.